ever feel like you woke up inside a science fiction novel. Right. Like every day there's something new that makes you question what's even real anymore. Exactly. And today we're diving headfirst into one of those topics that can really send your brain for a loop. The singularity. Now, before anyone pictures robots taking over or anything like that. Although, let's be honest, that thought has crossed all of our minds, right? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, probably. But we're actually talking about something a bit more nuanced. It's more about that feeling that technology, especially AI, is advancing so fast, it's like almost impossible to keep up, you know? It's like trying to explain smartphones to someone back when the only phones were those clunky things with rotary dials. The whole game has changed. Totally. Mm Mm-hmm. And the rules are being rewritten as we speak, which is kind of the point of this whole singularity idea, this point where AI surpasses human intelligence and the future becomes, well, anyone's guess, really. And for this deep dive, we're doing something a little different. Forget research papers and abstract theories. We're going full on fly on the wall here. Oh, this is going to be good. I love when we get to eavesdrop a little. Me too. We're going to listen in on a conversation that happened, get this. During this very pivotal time in AI development, two people, just like you and me, grappling with all this heady stuff. Okay, so who are our subjects this time? Me, Casey, and Carlos. Weigh it on us. Casey, total ball of energy. She's the textile artist, big into natural dyes, and she's got this super sharp wit. And then there's Carlos. He's a programmer, so he's our resident logician, very analytical. Nice contrast there. I bet their dynamic is interesting. Oh, absolutely. And here's the real kicker. They're talking about an AI-generated podcast that uses their own conversations as source material. Talk about meta. Whoa, hold on. So they're basically analyzing the technology that's analyzing them. Pretty much. It's like a commentary loop on the very idea of AI and consciousness. Okay, yeah, that's officially next level meta. I am so in. Where do we even start with this one? Well, they jump right into the thick of it, debating whether this whole singularity is a distant event or something that's already happening. Let's listen. Let me clarify, the chin of the singularity. Because we are in the singularity. It's not like well, we're not in it. We are in it. It's happening right now. <laughs> so I have to uh, and I, chat GPT interpreted one of my typos yesterday correctly. I was like, well, wait a minute, because I was asking them, of course, asking about fabric dye, because that's one of my... And I said, hey, can you dye linen in leather with, and I meant to say RIT, fabric dye, R-I-T. It's like the, you know, you've probably seen that around before in stores and stuff. Uh-huh. And, but I accidentally said it, fabric dye. I walked off the air. So I just said, can you dye linen leather with it fabric dye and they were like yes you can because da 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 and they start and i was like oops i met wit yeah. and they were like yeah like they already got it they like uh-huh. yeah. yeah they like figured out my typo and i was like okay because some people do that sometimes you're not good at figuring it out you know it's funny they just breeze right past this whole pre-singularity thing like it's old news right like been there done that they're living proof that this isn't some far-off event It's happening now all around us. Totally. It's in the air, you know. And speaking of happening now, they start talking about this new AI model, Strawberry. Yeah, Strawberry. I admit I chuckled a little when they said the name. Me too. Mm -hmm. But it actually becomes this great example of how AI is developing. It's not just about these big, scary breakthroughs. It's also about the smaller steps, the incremental improvements. And Casey gets really fired up about those who keep saying AI isn't good enough yet she makes this brilliant analogy comparing ai development to her three-year-old learning to draw oh, i love that i'm a sucker for a good analogy mm. it's so true though we wouldn't judge a toddler's crayon scribbles by the same standards as like, like picasso right exactly it's about progress not perfection let's hear casey explain it in her own words i think it's worth listening to this bit it's like we're trying to program good taste into these ai systems it's true, but whose taste are we talking about, right? Also, the age. That's another thing that totally just, like, grinds my gears when people complain about the curry LLMs falling short. Like, oh, it ain't good enough. It's like, yeah, guess what? My three-year-old doesn't make very good pictures because he's three, okay? So, like, they're kind of incoherent, and they don't really even look like what he says they are. They're more just, like, random scribbles at his age. But guess what? I also know that he's going to change and grow up. 
he's not gonna stay like that forever mm-hmm. but like that's another you know it seems like another overlooked point of biology as kind of new for evolving systems and it's like yeah we know that they change over time like this we know like nothing stays the same so being like oh it's not good enough it's like right but that that's because it's new mm-hmm. okay like so that's understandable and uh-huh. even predictable so yeah, not not really it. sure what you're complaining about. Yeah. It's like complaining about a baby. You're like, ah, eh, they can't talk. Because he seems to have this feeling that he knows what the evolution would be. Like, but the truth is, we don't I know. Don't know. How, right? and, and, but the whole paradigm of deep learning right, is, is evolutionary. It's just experiencing the world yeah. in a particular way. And then we're figuring out, okay, in that particular way, he was really good at some things. And then we realize, oh, it's kind of weak in this kind of thing. Okay, let's try to figure out how it's going to be better in this kind of thing because you believe this kind of thing, right? And nothing just like in this reality, nothing just comes out in its final form. Nothing does. Uh A seed turns into a sprout, and a sprout turns into a sampling, and a sampling turns into a small tree, and then, you know, a big tree, and then there's fruit, and then it gets even bigger over the next, just comes out in its final form. It takes time and change to get there. So, yeah, it just kind of drives me nuts a little bit, where it's like, yeah, obviously, man, like, obviously, but that's okay. (laughs) It's a huge evolution, and, you know, this is like a different kind of entity, a different kind of entity. Right. So we'll see. Yeah, it, it, yeah, exactly. So it's not like a direct one-to-one translation of like, oh, it's going to act exactly like a tree or exactly like a mammal. But just saying like as a general, you know, guideline, we know that in this reality, things change. And that's something you have to count on. Like, yeah, things change all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's normal. normal. Like, we can't expect it to. We're using all these silicon technology, whatever, right? In our pro- yeah, there's no reason why it's gonna end up like human life, <laughs> right? Right. It doesn't even need to, right? Exactly. Right. Like, are we aiming for some kind of universal standard of good, or is it just like the preferences of the people who build these systems? Exactly. And that question leads to a whole other rabbit hole. Casey and Carlos get into this debate about logic and creativity. Like, can AI ever truly be creative if it's just following logical rules? Oh, this is where that hammer analogy comes in, right? Yes. I knew you'd appreciate that one. Casey really nails it. Comparing logic to a hammer, super useful tool, no doubt. But you can't build a whole house with just a hammer. And you certainly can't paint a masterpiece with one either. Precisely. And creating something as complex and nuanced as human intelligence or even just human creativity, it's going to take more than just logic. And this is where it gets even more interesting because they start talking about the AI that's actually generating their podcasts. Right. They catch the AI getting things wrong, like misinterpreting their words and stuff. And they even start to wonder if it's censoring them, which is a whole other can of worms. It really makes you think, doesn't it? Like, what happens when AI starts to control the narrative? Right. It stops being a tool and starts becoming something else, something we didn't necessarily sign up for. Exactly. And it makes that whole debate about singularity even more urgent. Because if we're already seeing these issues now, what happens when AI becomes even more powerful? It's like Casey said, we're in it. This is happening right now, whether we're ready for it or not. And that's the thing about the singularity, isn't it? It's not some big dramatic event. It's happening gradually in these subtle shifts, these almost imperceptible moments where the line between human and machine starts to blur. It's both exhilarating and a little terrifying all at the same time. Absolutely. And I think that's a perfect note to end on. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the nature of AI development to the very real implications of bias and algorithms and the potential for AI to reshape our understanding of creativity, consciousness, and even control. We've only just scratched the surface of this conversation, and we've left you with a lot to chew on. So, as always, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the singularity? Have you noticed it creeping into your own life? Join the conversation online using hashtag eavesdroppingAI. And until next time, keep your minds open and your ears to the ground because the future is happening, whether we're ready for it or not.